The rolls go on a machine called the unwinder. Workers then position a strip of adhesive splicing tape along the end of each roll. This will enable them to connect one roll after another, creating an uninterrupted feed to the production line. Now, watch closely. Once a roll unwinds completely, its end sticks onto the splicing tape at the beginning of the next roll. Once that roll's unwound, its end will stick to the beginning of the next, and so on. An automatic tension adjuster ensures that the machine pulls the film evenly to prevent ripping. The unwinder also applies a solvent to the film surface. This prevents the film from sticking while unrolling. To transform this film into tape, they coat one side with a hot adhesive known as hot melt, made from several ingredients. Synthetic rubber gives it flexibility. A UV protector keeps it from drying and discoloring, while an antioxidant prevents aging. Synthetic resin makes it sticky, while pigmentation oil provides a choice of color, in this case tan. They load the hot melt into a preheated holding tank, which keeps the melt at a piping 390 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent it from hardening. The tank pumps the adhesive to a machine called the gluer. They wipe away the excess, then roll the film. And there goes the adhesive. A cooling roller, that black one on top, immediately hardens it. A computerized sensor ensures there's an even coat of adhesive. If not, it automatically signals the pump to adjust the output. Now, a machine called the Rewinder rolls the tape onto spools. Remember the unwinder that spliced the rolls together? Well, the Rewinder unsplices them. When a spool fills, a knife separates the tape at the splice point so that winding can begin on the next spool. The tape on just one of these spools would run the length of 85 football fields. The spools feed a row of sharp razor blades called the slitters, which divide the five foot wide tape into several strips. Shipping tape is almost two inches wide, so they get 31 strips per spool. Each strip winds onto a cardboard core and its end is sealed with a tab. The length of tape per roll varies according to the customer's specifications. As the machine ejects the finished tape rolls, in comes the next batch of cardboard cores. Then it's off to the packaging department. Nothing shipped out, however, before a quality control check. They test a sample roll. For 